This is a Unity Tactical Fast Micro Red Dot Mount. There's a good chance you've heard of this mount or others like it because these days in the shooting community, high-rise optics are all the rage. Like so many things in life, it's almost a case of what's old is new again. Anybody who's watched Black Hawk Down should be familiar with the legendary Gordon Carbine, which featured an early aim point red dot mounted on top of the carry handle. Friendlies! God, it's good to see you! Uh, it's good to see you! How bad? That original carry handle mount and this Unity mount are separated by a few decades, but operate with the same principles in mind. Namely, mounting the optic above the line of the iron sights. There are some good reasons for this. The most obvious one is passive night vision aiming. The first time you put on a helmet mounted PVS-14 or dual tubes and try to look through a standard height red dot, it's doable, but you realize it's less than ideal. Beyond that, the concept of bringing the optic up to your eye rather than your eye down to the optic by using a higher mount seems to be making a big comeback in the tactical and training community. Milspec Mojo just put out a video on this very topic last week. I encourage you to watch that if you want to hear about the benefits of a high-rise optic from somebody who shoots for a living rather than working on spreadsheets. Enhance. 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 Just print the damn thing! What I'm going to be doing today is discussing a budget alternative to Unity Tactical Mount for those of us who may want a higher sitting optic on the rifle but may not be able to stomach the price of something like this. This is not to take anything away from Unity Tactical or any other company that innovates and makes kick-ass products like this in the US. They should absolutely be supported. With that said, $186, which is the MSRP on this mount, might be out of a lot of people's budgets. I know it was initially for me, and that's how I happened upon this alternative. The Yankee Hill Machining 3-slot half-inch riser. There's a lot to like about this product, starting with where it's made. That this is a US-made product. It's machined from aircraft-grade aluminum and hard anodized black. It is extremely sturdy. You can tell you got two thick bolts that go the entire width of the mount. And unlike a lot of other Picatinny accessories, this one does not open or hinge on the one side, meaning you can't just stick it over your rail. In fact, you have to start at either the front or rear of the rail, slide it on, and then secure it with two bolts that go the entire width of the rail. To me, that's as sturdy as it gets. Another thing to like about the YHM riser is its weight. On our scale today, one ounce even. If we add a lower third height hollow sun mount, the kind that comes in the box, we're at three ounces total. This compares to 3.2 ounces for the Unity Fast Mount. For something that's US made and as high quality as it is, it's pretty laughably cheap. On YHM's website, these are listed at $18. Uh, you heard that right, one eight. You should be able to find them on Amazon for around $20. Uh, that's where I got mine. Going back to the Unity Mount, which looks very cool, the quoted height of the optic on this mount is 2.26 inches. Now to put that in perspective, absolute co-witness, 1.42 inches. Lower one-third co-witness, 1.57 inches. And if you look at the Scalar Works Leap, the tallest mount they make for the micro is 1.93 inches. Uh, that's the one that Milspec Mojo runs. Comparing that to the YHM riser, with Halasun cheap lower third mount. Lower third again, as we said, 1.57 inches plus a half inch puts us at 2.07. So right around 2.1 inch height for the red dot compared to 2.26 for the Unity. Not a big difference, but let's see how that compares actually mounted to a rail. We have our Unity Fast mounted here with a mag pole 
MBUS front sight. So the first thing we can see, in theory, you do have a nice iron sight picture through the Unity fast mount. Dots above it, out of focus. You can pick up the front sight there. I say in theory because this backup Pete's sight is what drew me to the Unity mount in the first place. And it pains me to say it because it is a cool idea, but it does not work for me. If you're gonna be using the dot with night vision, then you're gonna want the mount pretty far forward on your upper receiver, as far forward as it'll go before you get to the rail. And that to me is too far forward for a rear sight, even if it does have a big peep like that. So not only do you shorten your sight radius considerably, but in practice, I had a lot of trouble focusing on the front sight and not the rear peep uh, with the rear sight that far in front. The other obvious con to committing yourself to a proprietary mount this high is using a magnifier with it. Now, Unity sells magnifier mounts, and I'm sure they're great, but just like this red dot mount, they're not cheap. $219 for the Unity magnifier mount from what I just saw on the internet. But what if we test the Unity red dot mount with a standard magnifier mount on a half inch YHM riser? So this is the Holosun HM3X standard mount on the YHM riser. And it works just fine with the Unity Fast 2.26 micro mount. That should give you an idea just how close we're talking in terms of height between this poverty YHM riser method and the Gucci Unity Fast mount. We replaced the Unity Fast mount with the YHM riser and a lower third mount, the Holosun. First test, can you co-witness with irons? Magpul MBUS rear sight and it does just barely work. You can pick up the entire front sight there, use it if you need to in a pinch. Of course, for this to work, you need a hollow lower third mount like this one or the Scalar Works Leap from what I've seen. But to me, a better solution than the built-in peep sight on the Unity mount. Uh, sight radius is much longer. You get the peep much closer to your eye. Goes without saying that if we put identical YHM risers under a standard red dot and a standard magnifier, they work together perfectly. So to really drive home how cost-effective we're being here, $20 for this riser, $20 for this riser, assuming we already have the standard red dot mount and magnifier mount, and for $40, we have uh, very similar capabilities to a Unity Fast setup that unfortunately would cost us almost 10 times more. Again, not to take anything away from them. If you can afford it, if you like how the Unity stuff looks, by all means, get it. Not everybody can. Look, Kenny, I always told you that one day being poor was going to catch up with you. Okay, but you didn't want to listen. You just kept on being poor. Now it's Halloween and you don't have a cell phone. I think these YHM risers are something of a secret that more people should know about. If the name of the game going forward is higher optics, um, it's not exactly new technology, guys. Uh, as we discussed with the original carry handle mounts, a riser is a riser. These are US made. They're lightweight. They're sturdy. And there's really nothing not to like, I suppose, other than uh, the aesthetics for some people. So far, we've been focusing only on the Aimpoint T2, but uh, these YHM risers work perfectly well on EOTAC as well. So let's say you have an XPS3, like I have here, which is absolute co-witness, and you're kicking yourself for not getting an EXPS3, that's lower one-third co-witness, or let's say you want something even higher than lower one-third if you don't care about using iron sights. EXPS3, weighs 11 ounces. The XPS3 with YHM riser weighs uh, just under 10 ounces. So this is actually a taller setup than the EXPS3 and weighs an ounce less. Gonna show that on the rail here. It is just a bit higher 
I know it's not the most aesthetic looking with this little riser section underneath it, but I can assure you it's very sturdy. All of the uh, clamping surface is really limited to this little section. The mount on the EOTech is really only this small section. Unity does make an EOTech riser as well, but again, it's much more expensive than this. It's close to $100 versus 20. It is higher and it is bigger, so I assume it's heavier, but if all you need is to make your EOTech sit a little bit higher, then this will do it in a pinch. One last thing before I wrap this up, something cool I noticed playing around with these setups. This is the EOTech EXPS3, lower third, co-witness, um, no riser on it, nothing fancy. Meaning if we put on a standard magnifier, it works just fine. What's cool with the EOTech is because it's such a big window, if we put the magnifier on the half inch YHM riser, which of course is strictly necessary to use the magnifier with uh, an Aimpoint T2 on a high mount, it also works with the EOTech. You can have your cake and eat it too. It's lower third co-witness, so you can just barely see your irons through the window, which I like. Because the window goes up so tall relative to the Aimpoint Micro, the fact that you can use the same super tall magnifier and still see through it means that logically it's almost as good for passive night vision shooting as an aim point on a very tall night vision mount like the Unity. All right, this video took way longer than it should have. Hopefully it helps some people out there that are new to the riser game and maybe operating on a budget. That's all I've got guys. Uh, stay tuned. We will catch you next time.